What's up, D Nation? Nick Landry back for the hand by hand play in the 10K Challenge episodes. And we are still three tabling it up on Bravada, and we are very close. We are 53 $57 away from the $10,000 mark. So we're hopefully uh, going to wrap it up in this episode. We're looking for another 15 minute episode. I like the 15 minutes. I wish I'd done them a long time ago. Seems a lot better. Uh, can take a little breaks here and there, but time I mix down the audio from the previous episode, we're up and running on these. But um, what we're looking at, we still have about all the same players. Uh, player three still money bags. Player two and player five. And down here on this bottom table, we have six and four. So. Uh, we're just going to limp in another jack eight. We're, again, we're playing a lot more hands, especially when these guys are getting in involved. Um, cause we know when we are going to hit, uh, they are going to pay us off. Um, we're going to get away on this hand, but, um, this guy's playing a little bit tighter range. So if he checks, if he goes check, check, we'll take one stab at this pot. Uh, and then if we get raised, but we're going to be a little bit over half pot. Um, and if we get raised, it's an easy give up, but uh, we're just seeing if we can win it. Uh, they shouldn't give me as much credit for this, but these guys have been folding a lot post-flop. Um, again, any decent playable hand down here, we're going to be playing also. And player two has been getting cards and he just shows them. He's just one of those guys who, oh, look what I got. Uh, he's a guy from the last episode where, you know, we pretty much called out his hand from the get-go because he don't usually bet. And uh, that's what he had. And down here... You know, not a flop we can do much with. Uh, if we bet, it's not like the flop was up here, the way we can bet and probably take it down. So we're just done in the hand. If it goes check, check, that'd be good. And if we picked up a jack or something like that, that'd be wonderful. Uh, so pocket fives. His pocket five is going to be the hand that does it for us. Should have let you guys uh, take a bet. And whoever had the hand right, uh, the final hand will uh, win a free coaching session or something. Maybe we'll do that. If this is not the final hand right here and you guys have watched a previous video, I'll put that maybe in uh, one of his videos. So this guy is playing weirdly. So he bet very hard. And we're definitely going to call. And this could be our hand right here, guys. Um, we're actually going to fold up here, but our pocket fives. And I'm, I'm assuming if the guy has anything, he's going to show. If he didn't, I mean, he's not really. Anytime he's actually got something, he's betting. Um, so eight bucks. We're looking for the board to kind of double para. Para, ugh, it gets worse. The good thing is that's gonna bring in the diamond draw for somebody. Um, there's no straight flush draw, so nothing there. So we're looking for a ten, a nine, because if we just got a flat call again. And I don't see us being able to fold. So, and again, I think we're going to get paid off in a very good way if the board pairs up on the river. Or we make quads. Hell, quads would be great too. Oh, queen. So, we are definitely done here. Um, and there's not a bet we can really call with that diamond being out there. But if the board would have paired up, well, I think we would have ended up stacking both of these guys. I would assume if player two really bets here, then he would have had the king of diamonds. But we're going to probably look very sickly at um, a six of diamonds. That was hilarious. I mean, what the hell is he betting for? But um, I mean, if he was trying to steal it, that's great. But um, God, that would have been... I don't... Yeah, I guess he probably wouldn't have called. So, unfortunately, instead of being the final hand of uh, 57, we moved backwards to probably around probably see 30 60 probably around 70 bucks thereabouts um so oh well that was that was interesting um now we're card dead everywhere so let's see what the other guy had oh that would have been very sick um the other guy had a set so we were set over set and a guy with a six high flush um beats us both um so for us, good thing because we would have been down another seventy some bucks. So that really was a bad hand all the way around, wasn't it? So not pleasing at all. So yeah, you had a set of tens, we had a set of fives, and this guy had an ace high pair of aces and then ended up hitting the diamond draw. So 
Anyway, check, check. And then something happened up here. We kind of missed it during the hoopla there. So good thing our board did not pair up there on the river. I was thinking maybe somebody had the flush draw. And unfortunately, player two is going to be leaving. He he calls a lot pre-flop. Uh, he, he's saying he'll be back soon. So we'll see. He has to take a smoke break. Uh, yay to that. But maybe one of these guys on the other tables will... Um, Give us some money here and we can wrap this big baby up. Pocket sixes, is that gonna be our hand? Good thing is player six like calls or that'll definitely cover us enough that uh and we got raised by the really, really tight player. I mean, we've been here for a long time and this guy's played two hands. Now two or three hands. It ain't been many. I mean, I'm not joking when I say that. You guys can go back and watch the videos. Here we have the open-ended draw, so we're going ahead and bet it. Now, the thing is, is we're going to make the call even though we're out of position, and then it's usually, I, you know, I'm going to advise you guys. But the guy priced us. I mean, look at the pricing. He gave us seven. He should have made it more like 12, 13. Now, we didn't hit it, but he, he totally priced us in this hand. And now, if we wanted to, I mean, the guy is very tight. Now, will he lay down aces or something like that? Probably not, but look at this board that now he's half in the face to where if we went started doing anything. Now, if he bets here, definitely he's got aces or kings. Um, and he might have ace king. And if he does, then I mean, if he had a set of jacks, it's great. Um, uh, ace queen type of hand that's kind of weird. Um, we might depends on his bet size, and we might call one here 13. So does he have ace queen or ace king and he's overplaying it here and now he doesn't have anything to do. But the guy is very tight. So he's got ace king, ace queen, aces, kings, queens. He's got a set of jacks and probably a set of jacks. He checked, he checked behind us. It'd be very interesting to see. Oh, that's, that's sickening. Um, we timed out. It'd be interesting to see uh, tomorrow or the next day when the hands are root released what he actually had there um make sure we check our auto post button but he definitely priced in and probably maybe he had a set of jacks um just the way he checked behind us he didn't seem worried that the heart draw was there or anything like that uh here we're gonna isolate again because we know we can beat this guy out of money post flop and this is a decent flop for us to continuation bet on so he limped and then he raised, and this guy hardly ever does that. So usually means a very strong hand. And again, it's just one of those hands where we've paid a price and he's went crazy. Now we could call there. I mean, if he was more deeper stacked, we can definitely call. I don't mind that. Um, Cause again, he kind of priced us into the pot too, you know? Um, so I don't mind that call there if we wanted to. And then our hand down here, we actually won with it. So, yeah, when guys are playing weirdly, like uh, player four, not playing much, and they make a play, it's very easy to play against those guys. I mean, um, thing is, when he checked, he could be worried, and then his aces, but I honestly think that he's not going to fold his aces. That's where, when we do hit our six, we know he would pay us off in that hand. So, kind of the difference thing. We know that he's going to take those aces way too far, so... It helps us in the make money in that instance, and we just got to be able to fold those hands. Um, if it was lower cards and he checked twice, and then the river was maybe like a jack or a 10, then I don't mind betting our sixes there against him. Probably in this episode, we'll probably call it quits four to nine in the hand by hand play. I think we've pushed about an hour, two hours of play, and I know I hadn't played this week. Tonight was the first night of got a chance to really sit down and play so um like i said probably this episode will call it quits and maybe we can pick up tomorrow or the next day and try to wrap this thing up so wherever we end up at the end of the 15 minute mark here is where we'll probably stand we might stretch a little bit further if like we're getting very close in player two or somebody like that seems he set back down is be giving his money away and there's our buddy um we're definitely going to be calling here against him uh, we just know that uh, he pays off a bigger percentage of time. 
And we're going to go ahead and bet. It's a good shot. I like going ahead and betting these into him. So he might call. If he has a jack, he might raise. We can get rid of the hand. But if, and min raising, that's just, I mean, we, we definitely got to call that. There's just nothing we're going to do. And then the ace comes there. Um, and we're actually going to bet this ace. Let's see if we can get rid of, get him off his hand. He's got two pair. He's not going anywhere. And if he was on the spade draw, uh, he missed. And so, and then now we're going to fire again here on the river. Uh, I think he has a jack of some sort. He might look us up. If he does, he does. And if he doesn't, that's great. For us, um, again, his post flop is very weak. Um, and then he min raises us again. Uh, so jack nine would make sense. A set of threes. I don't really think he has a nine or he would probably raise. He makes a bigger raise. So let's see. Are we going to call the king high here? Did he miss a freaking spade draw? Um, man, son of a bitch. Gotta remember to hit her posting thing. Um, honestly, I look back on that hand and it'll probably be a hand I want to look back for you guys. Um, and we're definitely calling over here. Because we look back and, um... We're actually going to get away from this hand. This guy, we don't beat this guy's range. He never raises. And we're done over here. I wish we'd had a spade so we can continue for another round to see if we picked up the back door for sure. The way that guy played his hand, I would, and now he's setting out. I'm not too sure that uh, he wasn't just randomly clicking his button on. Yeah, he left. And that leads me to believe even more that he was bluffing us there. And it's unfortunate because he's the guy we're going to make money from at the table. Uh, I would have liked to win back and actually called him off with a king high there. And that's sad to say. But um, I think he was pushing his flush draw and he missed. And then on the river, he just totally done a donk bet into us. Um, any other hand just doesn't make sense. He couldn't unless he had a set of three. Set of three is the only other hand that made sense there. Um... And you've seen player two just pay off this guy over here. So, like I said, this guy's going to hit a hand and he's not going to be able to get away from him when he does. Um, I don't really bet. I mean, when he bets that, I don't really see him having the ace in that time there. So we're actually going to make a half pot bet into him. I just don't see him having an ace biggest percentage of the time. And he snap caught us on the river. Um, if he bets very strong here, I guess he had a six dollars. We got a call, um, uh, king seven, but I uh, don't see him having an ace there, um, bigger percentage of the time. So, and then we got we have a real tight guy up here who basically has uh open raised with a limper. So, we're actually just going to flat call and see what the flop does and what's it bring. And so all hearts, it makes it a little bit hard. We're playing out position. I'd rather not seeing the upper card and see how he played with that. Um, mm -mm -mm. So, you know, maybe an ace queen type of hand. We're still, there's no reason for us to get crazy with it. So either we have the best hand and he's only going to call with a, the hand that beats us. So if we bet, we can kind of see what he does here. So he's, he's done it on the river again. Uh, if he has pocket queens, he's probably going to be playing them the same way. Um, maybe pocket tens. And if he makes it small, I mean, I mean, if he overshoves it by ten dollars, and we can get. I mean, he might have flopped the hell out of it. So he bets eight. Um, he has a set of kings. Ace king queens. We definitely don't beat. Um, so ten eight. So and we timed out. I didn't get to think about her hand down here. I would have probably liked to call there again. I don't see him having anything of that board enough to where he would be able to bet what he bet. Um, but we timed out, so on that one. And it looks like we are going over in time here, so um, maybe we'll stop this one at the 20 minute mark or maybe win this thing out. Um, I have to check again where we are. Um, I guess we're back to around $50, somewhere in that area. All right, we're probably going to make this the last hand in this one, and then we'll maybe call quits. I might fire it up one more time once I get done mixing down the audio. We'll kind of see from there. 
And that's it for this episode of the Hand for Hand and the 10K Challenge, guys. Until next time, good luck at the tables. <laughs>